Saying that women created feminism is like saying that pigs created the bacon industry. Feminism is not beneficial to women, it's a weapon used against women. The foundations of feminism are not built on years of oppression and abuse and the determination of women to be free. They're built on a gigantic fraud. The Battle of the Sexes. In this timeless struggle for supremacy between man and woman, Feminism is a device to manipulate women, and it's not primarily concerned with men except to use men as a tool, as someone to blame, as the other, the equivalent of a big bad bogeyman. Women like to think that feminism was started by brave, inspirational women marching through the streets. Men on the street. Men on the street. But feminism didn't begin there, it began here. And although it might appear that feminism started in the 1960s, as we'll see, Feminism actually started 20 years before this. What was happening in the 1960s was not the start of feminism, but rather the start of a version of feminism that was solely concerned of abusing men. The originators of this male hatred, this misandry, were able to leverage the power of feminism for what is effectively a parallel campaign of hatred against men. This male hatred, sometimes called radical feminism, has become wrapped up in the original form of feminism and is now indistinguishable from it. The women originally behind this type of feminism were mostly lesbians who simply hated men. They were burning their bras and doing all sorts of silly things, making fools of themselves, and they were a joke. Very, very strong feminists. I've always considered myself a feminist, but boy, they've got me beat all hollow. They are feminists on the extreme, i.e., uh, let's just do away with men and have sperm banks. It was that sort of thing. The radical feminist movement didn't believe in any deodorants. I mean, it was just very fascist. Any deodorants, any makeup, any clothes. I mean, everybody wore boiler suits and mouse suits and looked dank and depressing. The women's movement is led by women who aren't really, then I would say they're dysfunctional women, the leaders of the women's movement. If you look at their histories, if you look at their backgrounds, there is significant evidence of failed relationships, of promiscuous behavior, of lack of concern for others. Um, and or of some other troublesome period in their history. I don't think they're normal women. And, and many of them are lesbian, which um, when, um, when this is pointed out, many, uh, many people often think, well, there's nothing wrong with uh, being lesbian. And uh, I'm not suggesting one minute that there is, but if you look at the lesbian women who were involved in the women's movement, you will see that they're a very particular kind of lesbian, and they tend to be the butch men-hating type. Indeed, some feminists simply want to do away with men. Regarding the feminist movement, what does the slogan, make the personal political, mean? To me, that, that, I always hated that slogan. What it really means is you take your personal damage. And one of the things that's very obvious in those very early days of the women's movement, how many of the radical women leaders of the movement themselves had really disturbed backgrounds and were very, very violent. Uh, and then you make that political. So if my dad's a shit, all men are shits. If you say that, you can do almost anything you like. You could go from the personal and make it political. So what happened is a sufficient group of women got together to complain bitterly. Because you have to remember the beginning of the feminist movement was a Marxist movement. It was women in the left of, of the politics in Britain who decided that they had had enough of working with men on the left and were going to have their own, in quotes, movement. So our feminist movement never grew from a grassroots of the working class women that they were always talking about. There weren't any working class women. It was actually academics, university lecturers, um, young women students was the beginning of the women's movement. Over the 12 years that I was running the refuge, if I went to speak, there was screaming feminists outside. I tried to publish a book called Prone to Violence. We finally did get it published but I had to have a police escort all around England and there were death threats and bomb threats. And the final moment came for me after struggling for all those years uh, when the bomb disposal unit came to my house 
because there was a suspect package and said everything that came to me had to go to them first because they were concerned about my safety and the safety of my family. And that's when I left England and went into exile for something like 15 years. Later on, in an effort to be taken more seriously, these virulent women went underground and toned down their public message. But their feelings towards men remained the same. The political problem at the time, which is something I've never been able to get out into the open, is that the feminist movement, having formed itself in late 1969, 70, never got the kind of support it needed financially because it was so extreme. But then finally they hit on, on the topic that gave them the credibility they so badly needed and it also gave them the funding. What well, major agenda for the feminist group is to make sure that they have the maximum amount of financial income from the victims of domestic violence. Later on and up to the present day, feminism has been adopted by most women as they've seen advantages that they've been granted over men. Government has allowed these feminist women to spread their hatred against men for decades, when such abuse of any other group than men would have been against the law. And outside, and this is in the, the press cuttings, there were huge demonstrations with banners, and on the banners it said, all men are bastards, all men are rapists. And I asked the police, I went down and said to the police, if that was black men or Jews, you'd arrest those women. But why don't you... Re and they just look very uncomfortable. And one of them said, we're frightened of them. I've even received emails from women telling me that my website is illegal because it's an act of domestic violence against women. You cannot complain against women without them feeling that they have a right to abuse you, to threaten you, to intimidate you. And um, when it comes to uh, the mainstream media, newspapers and what have you, they won't receive a few emails they'll receive thousands of emails, thousands of letters orchestrated by the feminist lobby, which you must remember is extremely well funded. And so the women are goaded into believing that they are being abused by the male population. Government has turned a blind eye to their activities because it helped to further its own ends by turning women against men. Feminism as we know it was truly created during the Second World War. Women were forced into the workplace by the demands of war in far greater numbers than ever before in history. In the arms factories, men and women worked long hours to fill the gaps in British defences. Men who were excluded from combat duties still carried the greater burden of production, but women had to take part as well. Changed women's lives forever, with many of them learning new skills such as driving bombs or moving tiny replica arrows around giant walls using only step ladders and their natural sense of man. But at the end of the conflict, the surviving men came back from the front. Those that still had their limbs intact and who had managed to retain their sanity went straight back to work. Women gratefully left the factories and went back home. Business and government didn't like this one little bit. They'd had their eyes open to the potential of women as workers alongside men and wanted them out of the home and back into the workplace. It was this desire, primarily motivated by greed, which started the quest to persuade women to work. Feminism was born. Feminism is about exploiting a new market, women. A better word for feminism would be put women to workism. This far more accurately describes the true nature and purpose of feminism. But the difficulty faced by business and government in putting women to work is simple to understand. Why should they? Why would any privileged group shrug off the luxury of not needing to work and willingly take up jobs when there's no benefit to them doing so? It's equivalent to persuading the Queen to trade in Buckingham Palace for a job in the local laundrette by telling her that she's oppressed by not having a proper job. The fact is no government could ever make women go to work against their will. She's got a man working for her, she's living quite comfortably, she's looking after her children, her husband and her home. What would she do with the kids if she was working? Why would she want to be apart from them? So instead of even attempting to force women into work, government and business use the pathologically selfish psychology of women to make women choose to go to work for themselves. This is not to say that women had easy lives before feminism, but what is true is that women's lives were more focused on the needs of their families, whereas now women are forced to be more focused on their nine to five jobs. The most difficult task, and what should have been impossible, was how could mothers be persuaded to abandon their own children to childcare whilst they went to work? Today's announcement is also looking at pilot schemes across England to give two-year-olds a place at nursery. It would seem like an impossible task, but the establishment was fortunate enough to have two powerful weapons to use against us all. The selfishness of women and the stupidity of women. 
I thought of several ways to describe the behaviour of women with regard to feminism. But I was forced to settle on stupid under the sheer weight of evidence. The true irony for women, so consumed with self-interest, is that feminism is not about setting women free. It's about enslaving them. Women would have been far better served by rejecting every notion of feminism. If they'd done so, they'd be leading lives of much greater freedom than they do today.